Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? We have the one, the only, and legendary Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. I'm always great after we've talked about two separate topics. So much fun. Yeah, I hope people realize uh, my expert series are done on purpose. I talk to six multimillionaires every week, and we hit three different topics. That way you can listen to a topic you like, and you don't miss gold. What I found early in my podcasting is People would listen to the first 10 minutes, Anna, and then they would turn off. And I'm like, you guys missed all this cool stuff at the end. So that's why we do three episodes. (laughs) So smart. (laughs) There you go. Well, hey, what I wanted to talk to you about is kind of, I think we're winding down this pandemic. I'm telling people we're in the light, you know, uh, all these um, government overreaches should be behind us shortly. You can define shortly, however you would like, certainly this year. And I'm talking about CDC eviction moratorium. I'm talking uh, foreclosure uh, moratoriums and all of these things. So just curious, uh, you know, when you think about all the things that were put into impact, uh, well, I guess we'll start with the CDC one. That right now, I think it's supposed to expire in whatever, June 30th. Do you see any chance in hell that gets extended or you think that one is uh, going bye-bye? Nothing surprises me anymore. And, True. and I think because of, you know, those in power right now, mm-hmm. you know, affordable housing um, mm-hmm. as, as a right is something really big on their radar. Mm-hmm. Because of that, I wouldn't, I bet you they still extend it. Oh. I bet you they still extend the eviction moratorium. All right, let's put Some a of these other things that. will go away. Yeah. I'll bet yeah. you a dollar a that dollar. it gets extended. Yeah. yeah, this is what I'm thinking, right? I don't think they can I think they're trying to perpetuate it and you can almost see it more, you know, go out, explore, you know, the the economy is opening. They're trying to get the economy back. You can't say that and tell landlords to keep eating, you know, losses. I don't think, I just don't think you can do that. And oh, by the way, let's not forget the federal court keeps telling the CDC they overreach and they have no power and they, they, you know, they screwed up the U S constitution. They need to go back and read it. Let's ignore that. So yeah, I, I just can't see how they would have the balls to do it. But that doesn't mean governors, because I that's where I think. I think CDC backs off, declines to extend, but that just pushes the power to the state. Uh, like yeah. my California governor, he's going to extend it, no question. I think it's already yeah. September. Uh, but I think, I think it'll be a lot like, actually, I think it'll be very close to what's going on with the $300 federal goose up. Some of the states are just going to say, no, thank you. Stay out of our business. Yeah, that's a very real possibility. I, I guess for me, because nothing kind of made sense, you know, and 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 it's not. Um, it doesn't matter what party. I mean, it happened under yeah, Trump. It, it did. It under started Biden, under right? Trump. It's it's, but it's like okay, let's let's stop making people pay their mortgages and paying their landlord, but we're giving them extra money so that they can, but yeah, we're not yeah. going to make them do it. So that made absolutely no sense no either. Sense. No so sense. when it comes to what's common sense. It's out the window with the government, right? Yeah. Um, regardless of who's in power. So, uh, you know, do I think they should, you know, release the CDC moratorium and say, listen, it's gone on long enough. Mm-hmm. You're all back or you've got unemployment. Absolutely. Do I think they'll do it 50-50, but I'll still bet you the dollar that they yeah. extend it. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll, we'll bet a dollar on that. it'll be longer. Yep. So, okay. We're going to bet a dollar. It stopped there for a second, folks, but we are back. So we're, we've agreed to bet a dollar. You're going to take the, and again, we'll be very clear. You're going to say the CDC order, which currently expires June 30th gets extended. And I'm saying the CDC doesn't have the balls to do it. It's going to just go away. So there's our dollar bet. Okay. That sounds great. Awesome. So, um, but you know, there is another level. There are the states. I do believe there will be some states that will keep it longer. And I get, again, I happen to reside in California. I think it's the poster child. I think it will be the last one. It wouldn't surprise me if government, Governor Pretty Boy, what I call him, uh, extends it to the end of the year. And then, of course, it gets extended further because, of course, you can't start evictions around Christmas and New Year's. So I could see him extending it till March. Exactly. And, you know, there are some hints like with what's happening with foreclosure moratoriums as well. Right. And mm-hmm. so you're already seeing some lenders, the big ones um, this last week, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, those that lend on most multifamily housing where a lot of people live. Right. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of residents 
that live, um, you know, in rental housing or in large apartment complexes, and they have now removed all reserve requirements. They were requiring up to 18 months of um, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Fannie's completely removed them. Freddie's removed them completely other than small balance, which is like one to $5 million loans. Um, and the, the um, foreclosure moratorium for these big loans is basically starting to, to go away as well. So yeah, we are yeah. seeing some Fed pseudo agency action that's saying, yeah. hey, we're back to normal folks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so that bodes well for the government saying, you know, let, let's move on with this thing. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk about avoidable foreclosures. Cause again, I think that was something nine months ago we had never seen. All right. Again, the whole thing for me is banks, as you know, acted entirely different than last time. Last time, don't talk to me unless you're 90 days late. Once you got 90 days late, you were 91% assured of losing your property. Now they said, check this box. Don't pay your mortgage, right? Completely different. Now this is going to start to unwind. Uh, but I think the the vocabulary word of 2021 is going to be avoidable foreclosure, where in 2008, it was um, strategic default. Uh, so I don't think we're going to see any kind of wave. It, I'm not even sure it'll be a trickle um, of foreclosures coming after this. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a lot less than what some people thought um, already. And I read, I believe it was last week that a significant people that were in forbearance are now out. Maybe a third mm-hmm. of them that were yeah. are now completely out of forbearance. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mm-hmm. remember the exact statistic, but it was a large piece of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that banks were still working to try to, you know, modify the loans, add them to the back end to keep from having to foreclose. Yeah. I've also seen though that some of the larger banks are starting to sell those mortgages. They want them off their books and they're selling them for pennies on the dollar. Interesting. In case some of them start to foreclose. So, you know, that, tells them that at least a, a particular piece of their book, they think may still not be able to pay and eventually are ultimately going to have to be foreclosed on. Yeah. And the other thing I just want to point out is even, I, I think there might be a couple of like very local, right? Real estate is micro. We talk nationally, but it's very micro. There may be some cities that are are hit, right? Very certain, like Orlando or Vegas or, or just yes. cities like that, that get hit hard. But here's the deal. Wall Street's got dry powder ready. So a lot of people are looking at this crisis going, ooh, I'm going to get a 50% discount. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Wall Street's going to come in and get a 5 or a 7% discount and be happy. They'll just soak up all the inventory. We'll never see it. And not to mention companies like Redfin and Zillow who are coming out and buying houses in droves yeah. before they're even hitting total foreclosure or hitting the market. So yeah. how that's happening yeah. exactly, I'm not sure. Um, but well, they're, they're they're buying they're, houses that are pre-listed before they're listed, and yeah, so it's crazy. I mean, the, yeah. like Redfin, Zillow, Open, o- OfferPad, Open Door, all of them now have essentially turned their websites into high-quality lead magnets. Yes, they have, and they are becoming you know whatever site you go to, they're the only buyer. They're putting out a you know frankly a, a not quite a low-ball offer, but you know under market, and if you're desperate, you take it. And then I just read an article on Saturday about Bloomberg, about how Open Door and Zillow are just funnels for Wall Street. They Absolutely. buy it cheap. They sell it off to Wall Street, make, make their margin. We, the public, never see it. Just wait wait until the powers that be see that and call that unfair. It's crazy. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. again, no discounts coming. No, I mean, it's so sad that people were trying to tell others to wait. I mean, I still remember... We talked about it a year ago, all these people talking about a 40% price decline. And we're like, I don't think so. It's not set up for that. And no. you know, now we're up you know, nearly 20, 25% from then till now in, in most markets. Right. And it's interesting too, I think, you know, not, not to go without saying, but when we talk about the migration patterns, right? Mm. Out of these, oh, yeah. you know, states like California, not to pick on California, no, but California, I don't mind. York, New Jersey, <laughs> Massachusetts, Connecticut. I mean, they're all going south. And we have a big influx here into Pennsylvania for those that don't want to go too far. They just went out of the mm-hmm. high regulation and high tax states. Um, but in the south and, and here, we, you know, some of these cities were really teetering on hyper supply right before the pandemic, end of 2019, early 2020, they were teetering on hyper supply, rents were starting to come down, occupancy was starting to come down. And all of a sudden in these states, because of migration, 
we're now undersupplied. Yep. And, you know, that's a, a strange phenomenon that we didn't expect in this pandemic where your real estate cycle, instead of coming way down, it's like it had a blip and now it's back mm-hmm. up, um, you know, where demand is so much higher than supply. So in other states, it's the opposite. You know, it yeah. was already in hyper supply. And now you're really going to see rent declines and and occupancy go down because people are leaving. Yeah, it it uh, they call it the smile states. At least that's what I've heard it. Right, the, everybody going south, east. Everybody's going, or not everybody, but lots of people are going south. So, yeah. So again, I think eviction moratorium is going to end. We'll see if it's soon. It's it's definitely closer to the end than the beginning. I think I can feel good about saying that. The foreclosure wave is not going to be a wave. It might be a trickle. A couple of cities might see a higher valuation. I think Wall Street goes to those cities, buys them up. Um, and again, I think sing, I, I saw the other day, single family home purchases. It'll be interesting to hear what you think of this. One in seven, one in seven single family homes have been bought by an investor or a non-owner occupant uh, since the beginning of 2021. Does that shock you? No, oh, there's, wow. there's still an investment wave, you know, and I, and I think for those that are sitting on the sideline saying, oh, I'm going to wait, 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 there's just as many that are just desperate to find deals, right? And yeah. the moral of the story is you can make money in any cycle. So, you know, if you find a good deal, it's a good opportunity. It meets your financial goals. You know, take it. Don't wait for something in the future. You can't time the market in real estate any more than you can time the market in the on Wall Street. Yeah, you can't time the market. Do the work. There's multiple things. I mean, you, believe me, I would gladly pay a little bit more to get the record low interest rates we have today, right? Because you're going to have the debt for 30 years. So absolutely. Very cool. Well, one more time on how can people find you be part of your world get get a part of greater purpose? Thank you so much. My website is greaterpurposecapital.com. And that's for investing and in really um, high quality apartment buildings where we're really making a meaningful impact in the life of our residents, as well as you know seeking strong returns for our investors. And the other place is on Facebook on Anna, R-E-I, Mom Kelly. Oh, do yourself a favor. Check out that website and follow her on Facebook. She puts out amazing stuff. Uh, Thanks, Anna. Enjoy your week. Thanks so much. You too, Michael. Yep.